Time Howie here with the greatest wide receiver in Jet history, the great Wesley Walker. Wesley, welcome. It is a pleasure to see you. I think this is four times in a row so far. So Absolutely. the first person I run into every time I come. Absolutely. It's great. And I always love reminiscing. Uh, what a great career you had, but nothing will top the four touchdowns and won the game against the Dolphins. To me, that's the top of the top. Well, I will never forget that, and I attribute that to Kenny O'Brien. And any time you have a good game, you really want to credit, credit your teammates to that. And there's a lot of things that went on uh, in our last drive, even to tie that game up. But it's a game that I won't ever forget because we uh, tied it up with no time left up on the clock, and I caught the touchdown and the winning touchdown. But there's a lot that went into that game, and it's a story of not giving up. And I almost did that day because things weren't going my way. And I remember I was told one of my teammates, I might as well let you come if they're not going to you. And I was very angry at Joe Walker. And lo and behold, the end of the game tells that story, and I had 14 E still record for the Jets. And you can never just give up, and that's a lesson I learned that day. Yeah, and I, I think you and Ken O'Brien had a, ga a great chemistry. Uh, he knew that you would always be the guy to go to. Well, and a credit to him also because we had so many different formations and we had different personnel come in and out. I happened to be on the sidelines, and he came to the sidelines and he told me to come in because my backup was in at the time, and I credit him for that. And it's a play that we always work in practice, and I'm always waiting for a call in a certain situation, and we finally get it. And Miami, they were actually in the right coverage. He just forced me in there and hit my hands, and I stuck, and uh, the rest is history. You know, Wes, there's one question I never asked you that, and I, and I feel it, it's something that a lot of people would get a DJ Chef in the house. That's my man. He, <laughs> did, right. he did DJ Chef at a party of ours. It was awesome. Awesome. But he's a great cook, too. That's he right. is. <laughs> Absolutely. But one thing that I think is really uh, an, an inspiration I'd like you to talk about is that you're blind in one eye. Yes, sir. Talk about the, the perspective of being a hero to young people that you were able to accomplish great in college, great in the pros with one eye. Talk about your career with one, being able to have such a great career and prosper being blind to one eye. Well, I accredit it. It's a God-given talent. I give everything to God. I think that's why my presence is here today by the grace of God. And a lot of people ask me that question, being blind and one eye, being born that way. I have no idea how that happens, how I became the athlete I did become, but I can only thank God for that. But one thing that I do uh, know is that you can affect people, and I really didn't realize, I, I, I meet a lot of people, I'll talk to kids and adults, and you try to encourage them, but a lot of people didn't know that I was blind. I had a parent write me, who was a teacher, uh, when his son was nine and a half years old, never forget this, he said he was listening to John Madden talking about athletes with disabilities, and my name had come up. So he wrote to me as a teacher, he had a, uh, his son had problems, he may lose his eye. So I called him that day, reached out to him, uh, had a conversation with his son, we became friends, I'd send him jerseys, just to encourage him. He wrote so many essays on me and how I inspired him to do better. He graduated from Cal Berkeley where I went to school. He went to that school because of me. Uh, they actually flew me out to California for his graduation. He not only got one degree, but he got two degrees. And he personally thanked me at this breakfast they had for me. And I had a great time. They published it in the paper. A lot of his friends and family didn't even know the story. And I've known him for years. He's nine. He's in his late 30s now. Awesome family. The Solari family. And it taught me a lesson that you don't know who you may come in contact with or you may affect them in a certain way. And I, I do a lot of speaking to kids or adults. and You, I, you know, if somebody asks me something, I'm going to be there for them. And that's hey, unbelievable. Wesley, what if I put together a show with you and several athletes in Long Island who are doing amazing things with disability? Is that something you'd be interested in? I would love to do it. And let, let me, can I tell you about a few of them? Yes. We have a youth wrestler here that his story was so compelling, he was followed by ESPN for a whole year. His name is Isaiah Bird, and he's a youth wrestling champion. He's eight years old, and he wrestles with no legs. And I think I've, I've seen that story. That's, That's a amazing. great story. There's also a tennis player out in Suffolk County who was the first doubles player in the history of Long Island to compete with able body. He plays in a wheelchair. Yep. I come in contact with several people there. And the last one is, she was an all-county catcher. 
and she was hit over 350, and she had one arm. And that's mentioned, amazing. And you mentioned people with disabilities. I work with the Bizarre Party Center in Nassau County, and they do a great job. To, and when you see some of these people that are going through certain things in your life, and, and when you're, I'm down, I look at people like those, and they encourage me and inspire me. I just met a Jet fan. We just had a conversation with Huck and White. They just went their vows. He's got some of the virus. He can't walk. He's in a wheelchair. He's the biggest Jet fan. And the commitment and the love they have for one another, and it inspired me. And I sent them something special from my heart because they inspired me. And as individuals, as athletes, a lot of athletes don't get a lot of credit. There's a lot of good that people do uh, in their lives, and you don't hear enough about those good things. And let's talk about Dennis Bird. No, the way, absolutely. The way a jet player became paralyzed. And look at the thousands of people he, he touched. And he's a God, God-fearing man. Um, he is an inspiration to me. And here's a guy that played after my career. I was doing a free game and post game for the Jets. So I got to know him at Bible study and watching his career. And I never forget that hit him and his teammate, Scott Mercer, who's a good friend of mine, collided. And I remember going to the hospital. I had to be there for him and to see that halo. And the fact that he's even been able to walk is a miracle. But he's an inspiration to me. And, and so when I look at my situation, I've had several surgeries and spine surgeries and I hurt every day. But I can think of a lot of people that are affected by cancer or disabilities. I'm just one of many and they inspire me and make me feel better. Because anytime I'm down, I can think of something a lot more worse than what I've got. So well, that's well, why so I'm today. I love your, your sharing and I'd love to work with you in the future with people with disabilities. I think that'd be great. It'd be all right by me. Wesley Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. You know,